subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect Hello viewers welcome to Newsweek South Asia a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations let's begin with the headlines first major pakistan backed infiltration bid foiled in kashmir insurgency continues in afghanistan amid intra afghan talks in doha and experts discuss united states future policy in south asia Pakistan's nefarious activities have not stopped in Jammu and Kashmir even after regular warnings issued by India at various occasions. The country has devised multi-pronged strategies to hurt India's sovereignty and integrity. These strategies include consistent infiltration beat along the LOC and sending in arms and ammunition in Jammu and Kashmir to instigate violence in the region. Recently, Indian security forces foiled two major terror plans of Pakistan in Jammu and Kashmir. Our report. Bad news loomed over Pakistan this week as the country received back-to-back -back flak from its neighbor India. While Indian security forces have continued their operations against Pakistan-sponsored terrorists, the country's army stood exposed as police in Kashmir's Punch district seized a cache of arms and ammunition. from a terrorist hideout near the line of control on November 9 based on a specific input a joint search operation was launched by the special operations group of the Jammu and Kashmir police along with the Indian army in the Kirni sector in Poonch during the search a huge bag carrying arms and ammunition and hidden under boulders near the line of control was found according to police the cash belonged to Pakistan based terrorist outfit लश्कर तैयबा ए के फिफ्टी सिक्स जो हैं वो चार हैं उनके साथ मैगजीन्स हैं आ, साथ उसके एक सौ इकतालीस राउंड हैं यू बी जी एल हैं ए एल जी ए जी एल हैं और इस तरह के काफ़ी जो सामान हैं वो असल हमें वहाँ से बरामद हुआ है इनिशियल जो इनपुट्स मिल रही हैं वो यही था कि ये लश्कर तैयबा द्वारा भेजा गया सामान था असला मिनिशन मीन वाइल इस्लामाबाद बैक टेरिस्ट आउटफिट्स received another setback as the indian security forces killed two infiltrators while defending an infiltration bid along the line of control two army soldiers and a border security force personnel were martyred in the counter infiltration operation in the kupwara district intelligence reports reveal that just before winter sets in a large conspiracy of terrorist infiltration is being hatched by the pakistan army According to intelligence inputs about 250 terrorists are trying to infiltrate along the LOC Infiltration attempt at this time uh, before the weather packs up is a desperate attempt by Pakistan army ISI and terrorist groups None of their efforts for infiltration will be permitted to be successful Counter infiltration grid of the security forces is very effective and such uh, ill designed and ill intended intentions by pakistan army isi and terrorist group will not be permitted to be successful if latest reports are to be believed the isi is redrawing the kashmir terror plan for this islamabad is holding meetings with the heads of terrorist groups like lashkar e taiba jaish e mohammed and hezbul mujahideen to carry out coordinated attacks in jammu and kashmir there are there is uh, intel information that uh, uh, the terror groups of pakistan have had several meetings with the pakistan army the pakistan uh, prime minister and the isi chief and they are planning to redraw the terrorist uh, activities in the valley and in india now in these terrorist organizations you uh, there were 
जैश ए मोहम्मद हिजबुल मुजाहिदीन एंड द बैंड लश्कर तैयबा एज वेल सो पाकिस्तान इज अगेन अप टू इट्स टेरर एक्टिविटीज वाइल द सिचुएशन इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर इज रिटर्निंग बैक टू नॉर्मल सी द कंट्री हैज इंटेंसिफाइड इट्स एफर्ट्स एट इंक्रीजिंग द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ टेररिस्ट इन लॉन्च पैड्स अलॉन्ग द लाइन ऑफ कंट्रोल to create havoc in the region such consistent attempts of pakistan at fomenting trouble and breaching harmony in an otherwise peaceful kashmir reek of its duplicity after weeks of acute violence in kabul the taliban in afghanistan are making public statements and carrying out incidents that can further hurt the peace process The hardline insurgent group recently attacked a woman for getting a job in Afghan police force. While the intra-Afghan talks in Doha are expected to bring a balance between the Afghan government and the Taliban, this incident brings to light the deteriorating civilian security system in Afghanistan. We bring you the details. The last thing 33-year-old Khadera saw were the three men on a motorcycle. who attacked her just after she left her job at a police station in Afghanistan's central Ghazni province shooting at her and stabbing her with a knife in the eyes for Khadera the attack caused not just the loss of her sight but the loss of a dream of having an independent career which she had to battle to achieve she joined the Ghazni police as an officer in its crime branch a few months ago The attack on Katera is indicative of a growing trend of an intense and often violent backlash against women taking jobs, especially in public roles. In Katera's case, being a police officer could have also angered the Taliban. The rights activists believe a mix of Afghanistan's conservative social norms and an emboldened Taliban gaining influence, while the United States withdrawal its troops from the country is driving the escalation. they cannot go out alone they have to be accompanied by a close relative they do not even have a, have a right to education they can't go to schools they can't go to colleges they can't go to universities they cannot play games uh, they cannot drive a car uh, almost every aspect of a woman's life is curbed i don't see a uh, worse situation for women uh, as uh, in uh, afghanistan if taliban comes to power Uh, if taliban does not change its way and is more modernized today the attack also raises concern over depleting civilian security in the country more than 90 afghans including civilians security personnel and insurgents were killed in just 24 hours in afghanistan as fighting intensified in the insurgency battered country in the latest violent incident The Taliban insurgents stormed security checkpoints in Khanabad district of the northern Kunduz province, killing seven soldiers. In retaliation, a total of 31 insurgents have been killed in Angandab and Panchwai districts of the restive Kandahar province, the former stronghold of Taliban. Afghan government's retaliation against Taliban has baffled the hardline group whose leaders are publicly making announcements about reinstating Taliban rule in Afghanistan. In a recent statement, Hamid ul Haq, son of a former cleric considered as the spiritual leader of the Taliban, asked the Afghan government to surrender to the Taliban and let the group to establish Islamic government in the country. The Ministry of Hajj and Religious Affairs in Afghanistan said that Hamid ul Haq's statements have roots in the Pakistan's intelligence agencies and that It clearly indicates Pakistan's support to terrorism. So the security work place is the case of the Ziyat, the Khatara, the Afghanistan, the Tarafada, the Hindustan, the Tarafada, the case of the Pakistan, the Jihad, the Malu, or the Jihad, the Malu, the Taliban, or the Afghanistan, the Himayat, the Kau, the Agai Pahakadi, the America, the Agai Surrender Shwa, America, the Agai Surrender Shwa. Meanwhile, Afghanistan's intelligence agency claimed to have killed a senior regional Al Qaeda member in southwestern Afghanistan, 
accusing the insurgent Taliban of harboring him, even as the Taliban had agreed to cut ties with international terrorist groups, including Al-Qaeda, under the peace deal with the United States signed in February. Afghanistan's National Directorate of Security revealed in an official statement that they had killed Mohammad Hanif, a key Al-Qaeda leader in Afghanistan's Farah province, where he was given a safe haven and protection by the Taliban. According to a senior Afghani journalist, Hanif was a Pakistani who used to train Taliban fighters in Helmand. You know, in purely military terms, uh, Al-Qaeda has 500 to 600 maybe fighters, whereas Taliban has between 55,000 and 85,000 uh, uh, fighters. So there is no question of uh, uh, bin Laden's, uh, uh, let's say, the Taliban gaining by one hell of a lot because Al-Qaeda will be with them. That is not the case. But if they break with Al-Qaeda, then all the smaller groups in Afghanistan which follow Taliban, they would also perhaps break away from uh, Taliban as such. So uh, it is not so simple a game as that you sign an agreement and they'll be able to go by it. Washington has been trying to end more than 19 years of war since the United States invaded Afghanistan to topple the Taliban rulers who had harbored Al-Qaeda terrorists after they attacked the United States on September 11, 2001. Currently, Afghan government negotiators are holding talks with the Taliban in Doha in attempts to end decades of conflicts, but calls by the government and international community for a ceasefire or reduction in violence have so far been rejected by the Taliban. Pakistan for decades has been sponsoring and aiding terror organizations on its soil, which are responsible for a large number of terrorist attacks in the entire world, especially India. However, with the huge pressure from the international community building up, Pakistan has been compelled to take actions against these terrorists. Recently, an anti-terrorism court in Lahore convicted four jamaat ud dawa operatives in terror financing cases, which again is nothing but an eyewash for the international community as these terrorists soon get bailed out of these temporary curbs. A report. The mastermind of 26-11 attacks and the leader of lashkar e taiba and jamaat ud dawa Hafiz Saeed, is that name in the world of terrorism, which while staying in Pakistan, has targeted Afghanistan, India, and many other countries for spreading terrorism. Despite being lodged in Lahore jail, he is able to run his so-called charitable trusts and madrasas because of his tall stature in Islamabad. However, with global money laundering and terror financing institutions keeping close watch on Pakistan's terror financing activities, the government is taking pseudo steps in counter-terror financing. Recently, a Pakistani anti-terrorism court handed down 32 years imprisonment to the spokesperson of Hafiz Said's Jamaat ud dawa terror group in two terror financing cases. The anti-terrorism court also convicted two other JUD leaders, including the brother-in-law of Said, in terror financing cases. Hafiz Said is an international terrorist um, and uh, uh, is openly roaming around in Pakistan. Now at the moment, you know, he may be in house arrest, but, uh, but uh, all sorts of facilities are being provided to him. He is being guarded by the Pakistani army and his organization is funded by the Pakistani um, government and uh, uh, his people are being trained by ISI and he is involved in not only terror funding as well as promoting extremism in the region. Under pressure from the international community, the Pakistani authorities launched investigations into matter of the Lashkar-e-Taiba, jamaat ud dawa and its charity wing Falahi Insaniyat Foundation or FIF for their holding and use of trust to raise funds for terrorism financing. At least 56 seminaries and facilities being run by the JUD and FIF in southern Sindh province were also taken over by authorities in the same case. Consequently, Hafiz Said, the co-founder and chief of these terrorist groups, 
was arrested in connection with charges related to terror financing and has been detained at Kot Lakhpat jail since then. In spite of these so-called measures by Pakistan's counter-terrorism department, there seems to be absolutely no curb being put on terror financing and terror activities taking place in the country. Pakistan, you know, the, when the government itself is involved in promoting terror, so one should not expect that Pakistani government or its agencies uh, are involved in curbing the, uh, the, the militancy. In fact, uh, some measures they have taken, you know, they are just an eye wash. These measures were taken just to show uh, financial action task force as if they are working, you know. Uh, they are trying to cut militancy, or they because they want a, uh, they, Pakistan has been put on the grey list of the Financial Action Task Force, and its meeting is going to take place sometime in next week. So therefore, they have taken some uh, measures. In October this year, the Global Terror Financing Watchdog Financial Action Task Force, or FATF retained Pakistan on its grey list till its next plenary in February 2021 for its failure to take adequate action against money laundering and terror financing. Besides, the Asia-Pacific group of FATF has already blacklisted Pakistan for unsatisfactory measures to curb terrorism operating on its soil. As long as Pakistan doesn't take significant steps to fight terrorism and proves that it is genuinely severing ties with Islamist militants, there are high chances of it getting blacklisted by the FATF. Moving on, the US-led NATO forces have been fighting with the Taliban and other terror outfits in Afghanistan and areas bordering Pakistan for the last two decades. The fight against terror launched in 2001 will be a challenging task for President-elect Joe Biden and his government. Today, we talk about the future policy of the United States in South Asia, where not only the fight against terrorism is prominent, but to counter China's growing influence in the region is also a challenging task. Today, I am joined by two Pakistani experts, Tariq Fateh from Toronto and Arif Ajakia from London, to discuss more about the U.S. future policy in South Asia. Firstly, Mr. Tariq Fateh, since the Democrats have come to power in the United States, what will be the policy change you foresee as far as dealing with South Asia affairs is concerned? Do you believe that the United States will continue to keep a tough stand against Pakistan? One has to realize that Mr. Biden uh, has uh, had a history of always supporting overseas wars. Uh, and he has benefited the uh, American military industrial complex quite a degree. He, he will be susceptible to the Pakistanis who he has promised that he will put in his administration. You have to understand that, that he has given a verbal promise and uh, uh, where he says that my administration will have Muslims in it. And who, who are Muslims? Turks or Arabs don't say they are Muslim. They, are, they know who they are. It's only Pakistanis use that term. And they have made an entry into his inner circle, which they will. So I am skeptical that any progress would be made towards peace uh, in our region. I think this will lead to further um, tensions because He's a great supporter of China, and China's agenda is to encircle India. Now, I would like to ask Mr. Arif Ajakia about the terror emanating from the Pakistani soil. Will the Joe Biden government remain tough against Pakistan to eliminate terror groups operating from there? Will the U.S. keep its relations strong with its all-time ally, India? It is India which is the biggest victim of terrorism and now West is facing the same thing, especially after attacks by Islamist terrorists in France and Austria. West has realized that we have to fight this pandemic together and they don't find a better ally than India. So they, uh, uh, after, especially in America, 
whatever party is ruling, be it republic or democratic, they both have to make India their ally. The United States is fighting in Afghanistan for the past two decades. What will be its future policy to deal with the Taliban and other terror groups surviving because of financial and technical support from neighboring Pakistan? Taliban is a creation of ISI. Taliban works under the supervision of ISI and Taliban will not let America leave Afghanistan. President Biden, I don't know what his policies will be, but it is better that America leaves Afghanistan but crushes Taliban and its masters, Pakistan army. Without crushing Pakistan army, without dismembering Pakistan army, nobody can achieve anything in Afghanistan. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at ani.com. This is Yeshi signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.